referee, look out now. From the sideline, forget about it. This baby's over. Oh, my goodness. One man. Goodbye. Hello, Heisman. And most especially, in 310 days in Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the football field. Another block. One more. He's got it. Touchdown. No flag. Samuel cuts it back. Ohio State wins. Here's the run again. Got it in Edwards. Whoa. Can they catch him? No. Got it in Edwards again. All righty, welcome back to another episode of Scarlet and Blue Show. Uh, Garrison, we're gonna dive right into the gift that just keeps on giving. It's 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 the Jim Harbaugh suspension, and then no suspension, and then suspension, and then layered underneath all of this are conspiracies and disgruntled ex colleagues that used to know Jim in the NFL and are undermining him at the NCAA and right. trying to bring his demise. And now we're back. It's back in the news. Announced today that Jim Harbaugh, that the school, that the athletic department has issued a three-game suspension on the man. Um, So he will be out. He'll be suspended. He'll be allowed to be with the team throughout practices. And then just remember, really, really everything leading up into, up until those three weeks. So that's the latest, Garrison. I mean, we've gone back and forth on a lot of this stuff, man. But yeah. I'm just gonna give it to you because I'm, because I'd say I'm exhausted from this. I'm sick. I, part of me is a little disappointed that they gave in, and that the NCAA's kind of getting a weird win in the way, in a way. But yeah. at the same time, I get it. Uh, um, I was honestly surprised by it. Um, cause at, at this moment in time, you know, I, like I said, like, uh, well, I think it was two episodes ago, I, I respect Jim for going 10 toes down on him, man. But I think what the university was getting to and uh, is that I think they believe that he was going to get the suspension no matter what, and it was going to come next year. And when it comes next year, we, we've gone off, we've gone over this. They played Texas early. It's not an easy schedule next year. And I think that, uh, to my surprise, it seems as though the institution and Ward probably put their foot down and said, no, we're going to do this because we don't want this looming over our head for another offseason. Uh, my, mind you, we still have a contract that we need to go over. Um, I mean, earlier today, we were both in um, in uh, one of Zay, in Zay's space earlier today. Because, uh, I mean, Josh and Trevor had uh, broke the story. And, you know, a, a few things I wrote down that I thought uh, were really interesting that he said, um, you know, uh, he said the NCAA can still add on to it. And, you know, I, I said in there, at this point, I feel as though Michigan is in the catbird seat. Yep. And if they were to add on another game, it, it, any other, any adding on any other games right now just seems petty to me. But they can do it. And I yep. think that Jim has put himself in a position right now to where they want to go after him. If you want to go full-blown conspiracy theory now, Bryce, be my guest. Be my guest. They 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 want his head on the stake, and it, it looks that way, um, you know. And then something else I got from him was that they he did say, uh, Trevor did. Jim wants to talk. He wants to talk about it, but he can't because technically this is te- it's technically not over yet. Yep. But I do I do believe that Michigan did the correct thing, and giving and self sanctioning and giving the suspension. Breaking uh, news, the- Garrison. <laughs> Michigan did the right thing. Words I right never thing, thought. Man. You know, I, 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 I said it. I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. Jim may now he may not he might not like it. But hey, Urban Meyer didn't like me. He got suspended either. But this isn't in a place. Sorry, Michigan State, where the coach is above the institution and program. This is not the place for this. This is Ohio State for me. And this is Michigan for you, Jim. And how else for us, Urban? As big as your name is, as big as your brand is, you are not bigger than this place. Who cares if you're mad? Take it. So, Interesting. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think, I think that's a good point. I think, I, I the way I kind of read the situation is that Jim, Jim didn't want this, and so I think, I think in one sense you're right. He's, he's just, he's, he's eating it. He's like, all right, the, the school is bigger, um, but in another sense. 
I think I think he would have gone gone to war. So what else? What else did you have? Um, I mean, I mean, there, there was that man, and uh, I, I do think it's good though that you know it, it does protect him and the program. It does it, it does that. I think overall, that's and, and Jim. You can be mad all you want, and fans can be mad all they want. But that this does that. It protects the program, it protects the coach, it protects this. It protects this year. It protects this year. It protects future recruits. You don't want kids being mad about uh, the suspension that nobody's going to be there or not. Get it done. Go, get it done with now. Play the season. The important games. Trust me, those first three games are not important. I can go out there, Bryce. You can go out there. Joe Schmo can go out there. Boo Boo the Foo can go out there and coach <laughs> these games. It doesn't matter. So, hey. Hey, as for right now, Bryce, this is it. I, I don't want to hear anything else about it. I don't want Jim giving me any more stories or headlines or you either. Just take your suspension and let's go on with it. Agreed. Agreed, man. Hey, that's a good point there about the recruits. This should put that to rest for now, right? So there shouldn't be any uh, more rumors of, of recruits decommitting. I'm not saying there will be decommitments but there shouldn't be rumors of that because of this, like that should be put aside. Yeah. Um, and I think, man, from top to bottom, like, I think, I think three, in three facets, this was the right move. So the first one is that with, with Jim, he doesn't have to admit he did anything wrong, right? They are portraying this as the school, the athletic department issued the sanctions. He'll be in alignment because he's in line with the school but you can always sit here and make assumptions and speculations that he wasn't for this. He wouldn't have done this. It was up to him. And he looks good. He looks like he's sticking to his ground, but he's trying to play the bigger piece. Whether that is the case or not, uh, that's kind of how it appears to be. I think the second thing is, and I think you said this well, um, Ward Manuel is taking control of the situation. Trevor on the space today, which he crushed it, did such a good job um, sharing everything and just being very – Detailed with his reporting, but he was talking about how there's been this drama or strife between Harbaugh and Manuel, whether it actually exists between the two of them or it's just in the media, in the fan base that people think this is the case. But there has been something there. Harbaugh was there first. Manuel came later. Manuel was thought to be hired as a former football player, right? who I think it was former football player. Yeah. Former football player who uh, was just going to do whatever Harbaugh says and basically saying Harbaugh's King, keep him happy. Then do the rest of your job. Take care of the rest of the teams. He kind of gets to go ahead and say, all right, I'm taking control of the situation. I'm in charge. And I think it's advantageous to him down the road when it comes to things like negotiations and contracts, extensions um, and how he wants to handle things too. So it looks good on his part as well. Um, and then I just think, yeah, as you said, the NCAA piece of it, it feels like if they come over the top and add on another addition, if they add on any any more than than one game, right, going into the Texas game, then 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 people are going to be upset. And it's going to look bad. So I think I think this is the best case scenario for everybody. Yep, I'm right with you, dude. I'm right with you. And Harbaugh obviously wrapped today with the most hardball quote ever, but I'll continue to do what I always do. And uh, and what I always tell the players and my kids at home, don't get bitter, get better. I don't think I'd ever hear Meyer say that. He said it there. Said it there. So, I mean, yeah, man, it's, hopefully this is laid to rest. Hopefully we can continue on with the season, get back to our regular scheduled programming because it's been a fun off season so far. There's drama and well, there's more drama in your camp. Um, but there's some some fun conversations in in the Maze and Blues camp as well, um, and we'll get to that here. But anything else on on the Harbaugh? No, man. That's, you know, I, I I said my piece on it. I said my piece on it. So you so, agree? Conspiracy theory. NCAA is out to get him. You were in agreement. Cool. All right. They want him out there looking like Ned Stark, man. That's good. That's good, Gears. Ooh. Hey, you, you get everything here. You get Game of Thrones, HBO references. Oh, wait, wait till I start using Lord of the Rings. Uh oh, watch out, world. <laughs> watch out, Middle Earth. All right, that's uh, that's that'll be for our later Lord of the Rings fantasy podcast. <laughs> All right, Garrison, you had a fun idea as we get in closer to the season, talking about three most important players on each of our teams. 
I think it's a fun topic. I think I'm, I'm very excited to see who you come up with because I think there's some, some names that people would probably assume, but I'm, I'm sure you're going to come up with something else too. So you want to go first? Yeah, no, I'll go first, man. Um, I, I'm going to start with a very obvious name. I've said his name plenty of times, but I'm going to use his name. I'm going to say him because he's going to help whoever is our first year starting quarterback. I, I honestly say the whole room, but I'm going to start with a very specific name, and that's Travion Henderson. What do you I call him, Trey Hay? Trey Doe. I call him Trey Hendo. Trey Hendo. So, you and um, you only. Huh? Oh, yeah, it's me. Hey, hey. Trey <laughs> Starts uh, here. So, I mean, I think just, you know, he helps the, the, the passing game. I think um, his explosiveness helps. And also, like I said earlier, helping that new quarterback transition slowly into being the guy, I think that's really important. Uh, my next guy is Josh Simmons. Uh, currently right now le- playing left tackle for us, coming from San Diego State University. Shout out to Dago. Miss you guys over there. Uh, he's our left tackle, man. I don't know how important it gets in that, Bryce. You know, uh, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, he was one of those penalized players last year, but like I said earlier, like having Fry as our coach, you know, but I don't think he's going to be here next year. But having him there is going to be very helpful for Simmons and our team. And then the last guy is Burke. Oh. Um, his freshman year, he was a complete dog. And I, I, I mean, you know, came out there a true freshman, playing with his like, like, like a house of fire. And last year, Bryce, I don't know what it was because he was he was always in position. He never got just you know just blown by by a wide receiver, but for some odd reason, when the ball was in the air, I, I, <laughs> it just looked crazy, man. I don't know what because he's a really good player, a really good athlete. And so, um, you know, I'm, I think it's very important. And I think it's very important that he solidifies that CB1 position. You know, Hancock is there, and he, he, he you know, last year he got the bus start a little bit. But there's guys like, there's guys on the team like Edwin Nelson, man. And I mean, he was a true freshman playing the SEC last year, locking guys up. So I think it's very important that Burke understands that there are guys that can play right now. We have true freshmen who I think are very talented. You know, it's, it's very important that he solidifies that role. So yeah, those are my three guys. Trayvon Henderson, Josh Simmons, and uh, Denzel Burke. Those are good. That's a good list. Uh, not, the first one's obvious, but then the second one, that's a surprising one, man. Is he projected to be the starter right now? Yep, moving Simmons? right tackle to left tackle. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I mean, that was um, it's Mountain West football, right? I didn't think that one would really stand with all the talent you guys have, and I think that says something if that guy's coming in and competing I mean, for the. I mean, it's a very young, very young group. Yep. Um, I mean, he's young too. Whoever's talking, about, he's young too. So yeah, I mean, just just so you know, I'm out. I'm, it's not on our docket today, but um, they they named Sunny Styles and Lathan Ransom the starters today. Well, that's what I was going to get to because I, I thought you'd say Sonny yeah. Styles. Um, I'll be honest with you, Bryce. He's written down. All right, I, I figured. <laughs> I looked at it, Bryce. And I said, "He's not. He's not. He's not." How do I say this? Burke is more important simply because. I don't think I need to worry about Sonny. I, I I don't think I need to worry about Sonny. Wow. I don't Ooh. think I need to worry about Okay. So, yeah. Expectations are high for Mr. Styles. I like it. That's a good list, man. That's a so good list. Have, Bryce, who do you have? So I've got I, – I tried to be not as contrarian with some of these picks, um, but some I think are just obvious. I think if you're going to talk about the most important players for this team, you, know, you hate to say the quarterback because that's kind of a lame answer. But I think JJ is. Jay, we go as JJ goes. Say what you want about him. Joel Klatt thinks he's the best quarterback in the country, which I know that's you agree with. <laughs> is that, was, that, was that fake? Yeah, he, bro, he came out earlier and killed <laughs> it. <laughs> and, I think, uh, and real quick, bro, I see five seconds here. At first, I didn't even think JJ was the most egregious thing. I thought <laughs> And Mertz at 10 was. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what did you in, wasn't it? Oh, how about God. how about that? Three Big Ten transfers starting in the SEC: Mertz at Florida, um, Milton at Tennessee, yep, and then uh, Sparty Boy. Uh, God, what's his name? Yeah, Auburn. Um, uh, Peyton Thorn at Thorne. Auburn. Yeah. And they think, and they say it means more than. Okay. How about that? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be interesting. So yeah, I think JJ though, man, I think he's it, we goes he goes. I mean that mm-hmm. should have been national championship last year, um, and and those two big picks were huge, but it also kept us in that game. And he he was there, you know, to 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 get us out of those binds early on in the first half against Ohio State, and that's just two examples, man. But like I think his leadership mixed in with his capability. Harbaugh had a quote on him last last week, or it was a couple weeks ago. But he said JJ is at the point where if he was 50% throwing, he would be starting. So if he was at 50% physically with an injury, he would be starting because he can throw so well. Plus, he's so smart and tough. And that is the highest praise a football player can ever get, especially a quarterback. So there's a lot of stock in number nine in that QB1 position. (laughs) And it if he goes down, right, things things will change, and I don't want to talk that way because that's negative energy thrown out in this in this world that we don't need to have. But I, yeah, I think I think he's got to be number one. Yeah. Don't smile, don't smirk. Look at me that. <laughs> number two, I've got Mike Sanders still. Again, talk about that leadership. I think a young secondary, um, and I know we got Rod Moore and Macari Page, but then those cornerbacks are are. Or the sorry, Keogh cornerback too, which a story came out today that Jade McBurls is competing for that uh, CB2 spot. When I think Josh Wallace, don't smirk. I think it's a four star talent. Get out of here. <laughs> don't um, what you want. So I, I think, I think Sanders still will be huge. I was just between him and like Junior Colson, just that middle linebacker. There's those two guys that I thought were so important. I mean, it's. It's interesting. Uh, Chris Jenkins could be an argument there as well, but I just think I think Sanders still being a vocal leader out there. Uh, he's got. He's he feel like he's been there forever now. Uh, I was watching the the clips from the 2019 Notre Dame game where Michigan trounced Notre Dame in the torrential rainstorms in Ann Arbor at night, and he 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 caught a touchdown pass in that game. It was crazy. So that dude's been around forever. It feels like that's wild. I know. I know. And now he's, you know, now he's coming back for a senior year and total part of the defense. So excited about Mikey. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So I think, I think that defense is fun. Again, I worry about the depth. So if, if, if the, if Will Johnson goes down, right. Or one of the safeties goes down, you know, does he move around and and kind of who steps in? I think he's one of those guys who can play a bunch of positions. Mm -hmm. And then for number three, Garrison, a little bit of a cop out, but I said, whoever's going to be center. So that offensive line has so much talent. And you had Andrew Vesteris two years ago starting. Uh, and then last year you had the top center in the nation transfer, Ole Ole Atumawume. I, I butchered that, but I might have nailed that too. I don't know how, how well that went. But Olu, yeah, sure. Um, who's now playing for the Seahawks. Um, and so, yeah, replacing him. So you've got Greg Crippen, who's kind of returning – um, returning talent, and then obviously the transfer from Stanford, Drake Nugent, uh, as well. So lots of talent around them. You need the continuity at the center position. Who's that going to be? So those are my three picks. If you had to pick a player, so real quick, I'm just going to put a little caveat, a little, little curveball. If you had to pick a player from Ohio State that you think is important, who would you choose? Oh, good question. I mean, easy answer is Eichenberg, middle linebacker, the captain of the defense. Probably Eichenberg. But Burke's, uh, Burke's a good one, too. Yeah, Eichenberg or Burke. Burke. Someone on that defense, because the offense is going to be fine. Yeah. Again, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to make fun of Ryan Day's head coach until he actually wins something. But he is an offensive genius. And he can he can figure that out. Uh, the, the fact again, we talked about this last show, but the fact that Buckeye fans are worried about the quarterback position right now is asinine. So I'm not worried about that. The defense side of the ball, though, Jim rumor has it Jim Knowles might be Don Brown 2.0. Just saying, that's what 
That's what the rumor mill is saying right now. So you need a leader so there. I see my coach give up 60 points in a game. I'm not worried about that. Um, should, have been, should have been 50 last I year. I have a good one for you guys. That's, uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's a little different people. Ooh, I would I like say it. Harold or McGregor. You're going uh, with the defensive end. Yep. Yep. Um I think I think you're I think Mason Graham and um um but what's what do we got? We just call him the alien, the the freak the mutant. the mutant, what's his name? Um Chris Jenkins. I'm, I'm, I'm upset that I, I actually like him as a person. I'm, I'm oh, he's an infectious personality. Chris Jenkins, boom. Chris, Chris Jenkins, yeah. Yeah. Uh but I, I trust those two completely. Your your edges out. I'm not sure of yet. I'm actually not sure of your edges yet. So mm. uh, I'm actually really interested to see what they end up, how they end up playing. But yep, okay, cool. Yeah, no, I like that. I mean, the edge position, you go really go four deep with Harrell because Harrell and McGregor would probably be the starters. But then you've got um, Josiah Stort, and then you've got. Um, Derek Moore as well, who came on last year a little bit. Um, they had a few good, I had a few big tackles against Maryland as well. So, but that, yeah, yeah, does the defensive line I think is one of my least concerned positions. I know, I, overall, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's as I'm interested to hear people's thoughts. Um, anyone we're missing? I mean, I went up and down the roster today trying to figure out a more fun pick, but I just, I don't know, man. The quarterback position, stability on defense, yeah. and then new center coming in. Makes you wonder. Hey, kind of in a similar vein, looking ahead, looking towards the season, Michigan, Ohio State play in, in the game. That, of course, is going to be the most anticipated game probably again this year. Then both teams have to deal with Penn State. What are the other games you're worried about? What are the other trap games? on the Buckeye schedule are, are out there that make you a little hesitant. Yep. So um I have two games. And uh you know they 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 kind of um there's it, it's a stretch of games that Ohio State has Bryce that scares the living daylights out of me. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? And so well, the first game I have is starting in uh, week five against Maryland. Um now, though Gaddis is there calling plays. Shout out Speed and Space. We are the one team that has not, we are the one Big Ten team that has not lost to Maryland. But we have gotten scares from them. <laughs> I, I remember uh-huh. last year, Bryce, we're blowing their doors off. And I get on the phone with loss in, in the fourth quarter. I ask, why won't they just lay down? And it was the week before we played you guys, and I'm just getting pissed because I'm I'm over here joking and laughing about you guys struggling before you play us. Next, <laughs> yep, thing, yep. next thing I know, we can't put these guys away. So there's yeah, that, that game. That game got hairy. Oh, oh my goodness, Bryce. So I and so I I want to I want to talk the stretch of games to you, okay? And then I'll, I'll, it'll lead to the game I'm I'm I, that I'm afraid of. Okay. So September so 23rd is Notre Dame. Okay. Then two weeks after that is Maryland, then at Purdue, then Penn State, then at Wisconsin, and that's where I stop. Um, I'm looking now. Really that's not a that's not a night game, right? So uh, no, TBD. Uh, as of right now, I don't think it's been announced. That but is TBD. <laughs> there's I don't know what else is on the schedule for that week, but. If that's not a night game, and well, uh, we deserve better from no, from... We, we know we deserve to have that game at night. If, if, if I don't know Wisconsin's schedule, but if they are at one loss, undefeated, top. I mean, if Wisconsin's undefeated, Bryce, that's a top 15, top 10 team. You put that game at night, you got the, the crowd jumping around. Yeah, that, that's the they got Iowa and Illinois the weeks leading up to it. So, not, not easy, but. You could see them going into yes. that game undefeated. Uh, you know, you got Luke, you know, you got Fickle playing the team he loves, the program and the institution he loves. Uh, mind you, Ryan Day is undefeated against him, 1 0. Uh, 
but uh, and you know, um, and I, I would hope by then our secondary struggles have been fixed. But if you're telling me Wisconsin's out there throwing an air raid, <laughs> we have... <laughs> you watch out. And we haven't fixed anything in that secondary, you know. It's, but um, you know, and I don't, you know, Maryland's more just like a trap game. But at Wisconsin, I would be a fool not to think that's not a scary game, uh, you know. And um, I can't say you're not like I've never seen my team lose to Wisconsin. So yeah, those, those two games, Maryland and Wisconsin, and that long stretch of horrible scheduling the Big Ten gave us. It's a bit tough stretch. Tough stretch. Uh, I was again looking at this here. Yeah, you got Sparty at home, which I know you're not worried about them. <laughs> that's a nice. Minis- <laughs> Minis- yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. And Minnesota's at home with the great jerseys. And Penn State's at home, but you go at Purdue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. I know what I want to say about that Purdue game, but that doesn't reside to this year. So we're gonna. <laughs> no, you have to worry about that. <laughs> Yeah, I told you. We said it here first. Whatever the spread for that Michigan State game is, take the buck, guys. Just take the buck. 25, 35, take it. I'll put the house on that. I'll tell you that now. I'll put the house on that. Um. All right, so looking at Michigan's schedule, Bowling Green. No, I'm, I'm going to try to go somewhere with that. Nice. Here's, I'm not too worried about the schedule up, up until – Honestly, up until till Penn State. But if I had to be honest with you, th- so the Rutgers game, it doesn't make me worried. This is going to be a bonus pick. Rutgers game, I mean, they two I just two years ago couldn't put them away. I think Shiano's a good coach. College football can be a weird thing. I think they had a top twenty five defense last year. Did they? Oh, good, good uh, stat. They weren't bad on defense, bro. They weren't bad. Yeah. And, and if you watched that Michigan game last year, it was close until we had two big picks. I kind of flipped the game. I can't relate. So we blew them out. We blew the doors off them after that. You can relate. Yes, you can. Uh, so I, maybe maybe the Rutgers game. I think Nebraska is going to be interesting because it's at Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Time hasn't been announced yet. But Matt Rule is obviously a decent coach as long as you got the little schmock thing on. We'll see. But the games that worry me, and I don't know if Michigan State was supposed to be excluded from the qualifications of this question. No, no. But Michigan State at night, that game's been TBD, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be a night game. Or has it been announced as night? I think it has yeah, been announced. It's a night game. Yeah, it is announced. All right, it says here it's been it's TBD. But you know how I feel about Michigan State, about that program. I respect Ohio State. I respect you guys. I don't respect that program. I don't have nothing against Mel Tucker, whatever, he's fine, but I, I can't stand that team. Funny things happen in that rivalry. I don't like it. I don't Michigan State can't be as bad as they were last year. That game's hairy. I think a lot of people are I think a lot of people under are I think a lot of people are taking these last two years of Michigan State and not for what it's worth, I bet you if I was to go down the composite. That's the fourth most talented team in the Big Ten. Fourth or fifth? Going into this year, or are you talking about just over the I last think, yeah, the current roster? Going to, like, if I was looking at the composite, like the composite, they have to be the fourth or fifth most talented team in the Big Ten. All right, we'll double check those stats later. But well, that's it's, 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 a, it's a guess. It's a guess. Yeah, yeah. There's not. It's not like I they're think Michigan State's going to be better than most people. Think, most people think. Yeah, their win total right now is four and a half. You and I take both it, agreed take to take the over, but I said if it was five and a half, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it. I think they'll get to five games. I don't think they're going to get to going to get six. So, so that, was that the one game or, or that I'm worried about? Yeah. No, no the okay, the, okay. the game that absolutely terrifies me. That I don't care what the spread is. I'm taking Mar- I'm taking the other team. I gave it away there. Maryland. It's after Penn State. It's before Ohio State, and it's. In College Park, it's in the Snake Pit. Uh, that game, I hate that. Now, two years ago, we uh, went there and blew the doors off them. So, so there's solace in it there. But obviously, last year against Maryland, I was at that game, back and forth. It took you know a, a Herculean effort by Blake the Great to really carry us mm-hmm. through that game. McCarthy, 
was still getting his feet wet. And then mix that in with the week, the game going into the game. And we mm-hmm. saw what happened with Illinois. And we saw, I mean, you, you just said there, right? You, you dealt with them last year before playing Michigan. So I hate that game. I hate, I hate that game. And if Maryland is, you know, if they go into that game with a couple losses and they're hot, they said they lost to you guys, lost to Penn State. Yeah. But then they have, they've won every other game. I don't know what the rest of the it looks like. I hate that. I hate that game. So I, I'm very curious about this because you're the one Michigan fan I've heard not worry about this. Playing at Nebraska doesn't scare you at all. Why well, I mentioned it. It's at night. It's a new coach, man. It's a new coach, new system. And it's what, week week five, six? I mean, and they have the most athletic quarterback in the Big Ten. It's week five. Who are you talking about? Sims from uh, Georgia Tech. Oh, I forgot. He, he transferred to Nebraska? That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, right. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not gonna go to that game. Think we're playing, you know, Norfolk mm-hmm. State, but the loss is going to the game actually. Yeah, yeah. in Lincoln. Yeah, he oh, wanted that would be fun. I, That'd yeah, be really I, fun. I, I, I wish it was a night game too, but it says TBD, so I don't know if it's been announced yet. But no, I mean Lincoln at night is freaky. Two mm-hmm. two years ago, we saw it where we squeaked one away. So I, they have I, a lot of talent. They have a lot of talent. Do they? I think they do. Like I, and they have. I think they have one of the top, their top ten NIL collective two year two last year they were. Yeah, no, I know last year they were they were huge on that front. I just it's it's. I think there's a lot to be said. This is a conversation for another time, but I think there's a lot to be said about Nebraska, and how it really is the program that I don't think will ever be back. I don't. If there's, wrong. Coach, if there's a coach that can do it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm sitting here thinking how Scott Frost didn't work and that should have worked. Like, there's no reason Scott Frost shouldn't have worked. Bryce, right? I, told, I remember Tom. Uh, I, I'm not surprised by this. I remember my I remember my, my dad couldn't stand Bo Pelini. Another Youngstown guy, actually. Yep. And I told my dad – if you think another guy's going to come there and average nine wins a season, you are crazy. And look where we stand. Look where we are now. It, man, that young Garrison Gaddy, man, he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> yeah, what he happened? He knew what he was talking about. Where did he go? I want him back. <laughs> Nebraska, if I – I can't say if I remember right because I wasn't really – I was alive, but I wasn't really aware of how college football was set up. But if I stand correct – Nebraska had the TV deals and they had a lot of opportunity for a lot of eyes on their games, which made them unique. And you would get kids from money. California and they had a lot of money. money. It's the only show in town. It's a you know, big 12 at that time. I think they're part of the big 12 when they kind of hit that stride. And then, yep. and, and then, yeah, obviously what we've seen now with conference TV deals, people being able to make money elsewhere. Why would you go to Nebraska when you can go 50 other spots? I just don't know if a school like that will ever be able to bounce back. And I hope I'm wrong because I think it's good for college football when Nebraska is good because of that fan base. I, mean, I just don't think. Did. Yeah, but you're you're comparing Michigan to Nebraska? Take the 90s, take the early 2000s. Yeah, you guys are Nebraska. Wait. Wh- think, what? Think about, it, right, think about it. From 97. From 97. Think about your program from after 97. Have you guys not been kind of the same? You're like you just want to disregard like the last and, and, no, couple no. years until these last two years. Have you guys not somewhat been the same? Dude, I don't. I, I can sit here and honestly say I don't think it's been that bad. Uh, no, I think I think Nebraska no, not that bad, not that bad, not that bad. But you have reached college football purgatory. You were there. I, see, I didn't think we were in purgatory, Garrison. I think we were in. I think we were if you want to count purgatory as like that middle ground where you were just kind of stuck, like mediocrity. I just lost your video. Did you just, is that just, I'm here. That cut you. All right. Your video. No, I'm here. I, I'm a, you uh, Bryce. It, it didn't get that bad. It didn't get that bad. What are you talking about? 
What no, okay. If you say if you say purgatory, purgatory is the middle point between heaven and hell. And Catholics, call me out if I'm wrong. I don't know, but I yeah, but I, mean, I understand. Right? You were there. We were, you were there. no, dude. We were in college football hell for Michigan standards, right? <laughs> we're going Michigan, five by standards, Bryce. Your standards are no better than Nebraska's. What are you talking about? We were going. You don't have to make me mad. <laughs> what are you talking about? Up until two thousand, up until Lloyd Carr. Last season, 2007, we were consecutively winning nine, ten games. Am I wrong? I'm listening. Right, competing for the Big Ten championship. And then he left, and we went three and nine, five and seven, seven and five. Correct my 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 numbers there. Brought in a new coach, which is the ultimate sign of being in hell, because you fired the other guy. You need to bring in a new guy. Completely different system. You have a, a good surprise. Right. We have fired two. two coaches, and we have not reached that point. That's not true. When you fire coaches, you didn't fire Jim Trestle we because of we performance. We did fire Jim Trestle. What are you talking about? Not, but not because, no. You didn't hear what I said. You didn't fire him because of performance. It wasn't because you were with, you were losing eight games. You fired him because like you and Nebraska have. Outside these, listen, because I want, I, I don't, I want to give you credit for these last two years. Outside these last two years, Bryce, you and, and I'm not saying you guys have been. I would say you guys have maybe had two better years, but you and Nebraska have been neck and neck the same type of programs since '97. And truth be told, Bryce, I mean, if I'm just being honest here, who, who's the best player Michigan has put in since 2000? Like best NFL player? Mm-hmm. Will be Tom Brady. Since 2000. Well, I think he is last year at Michigan was 2000. Was it? Yeah. So, but aside from him, okay. the best player in the NFL? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, do you have an answer that you're trying to get I to mean, here? I mean... I, 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 in terms of college football, because there is a suit, and I don't think you guys have had a player as good as Sue in college. Oh, well, I see. That's what you're trying to get to. Like, they, they, like, I think there have been things that equivalent to you guys being the same programs. That's all. So I, I get what you're saying because there were. Str- I'm looking Why at the record the last now. Two years? So right now you guys are you guys are picking the Big Ten, class of the Big Ten, college yeah, football. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so 2004, they went five and six. I'm not going to go through every single year. But right, between right. since 2004, they had three 10 win seasons. And then they had, I'm counting quickly here, four, five, five, six, depending on how quickly I can count, nine win seasons. But Garrison, they went five and six in 04, five and seven in 07. And then since 2017, four and eight, four and eight. Five and seven, three and five. COVID year doesn't count. I'll give it to him. Three and nine, four and eight. I get what you're saying, but I don't know if it's fair okay, to put maybe, them on the same maybe, Okay, maybe me a little mean. You're being a little, a little hurtful. Okay, maybe a little. Okay, uh, hey Bryce, I'll take my L. I'll take my L on that one. Good job, sir. We got into a, a bit, and we got a minute left here, but we got into a debate this week about blue chip programs or blue chip, blue blooded programs. Nebraska's on that list. Georgia's not. And I asked you, and shoot, we're going to continue this conversation later, but I asked you, what would it take for Georgia to, to be in there? Because I think you would switch those two, and you're saying that you don't think that can happen. Yeah. Nebraska was good when they first started football. Georgia yeah. was trash, garbage, poo-poo, bad, all <laughs> that. Uh, this was great. This is, I mean, We have so much more to talk about still. We'll touch on it next week or ne- next episode in a couple of days here. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you all soon.